watched me stitch out that hat and if you have not here's how you can take any letter in any type form and auto digitize it and then turn it into 3d puff uh, it's pretty simple so if you have illustrator or something else all you need to do is if you type the letter in is you're going to right click and you're going to create outlines and once you're done with that you'll just copy that and you're going to bring it over here to hatch and once it's in hatch you can click auto digitize so let's come up here auto digitize it right take off the auto spacing and auto split okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to come down to edit objects and we're going to break it apart okay and so now that you've broken it apart, you can see over here you have different sections. Now, what you want to do is you kind of want to click on things and get everything in order now. So I would go hold your control button and hold it down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then hit your, your sequence button. So now you have everything sequenced, but you're going to have to do, and let's look at some of the design overview here. Or excuse me define design information you're gonna have you only have one trim now so that's good and that's what you want to end with but you just want to make sure that you don't have more than one trim and because I um, because I just set it up on how I wanted to do that now you don't have to concern yourself anymore with um, uh, the trims right but keep up with what you're doing so I'm gonna start down here remember this is the first letter but I want to start down here because remember we need to add a cap you're gonna have two caps so we're gonna have one up here all right let's hide this in the background now so let's hide this so you're gonna have one cap down here all right and then you're gonna end up with another cap up here uh, let's make a cap for down here let's go ahead and digitize a uh, close shape so I'm going to come here on the end here, kind of hanging out, left click, right click, left click, left click there, I'm going to put H, and then I'm going to bring this up like this, cool, now, we're kind of like already there, I'm going to press O, so I can push my object, I'm going to drag it out, I'm going to drag this out just a little bit, about a half a millimeter is what I do there. So now I'm going to press H. And we know we're starting here. And we're going to end. Excuse me. And we're going to end over here. But first thing you want to do is drag this in. You want these to be smaller on the inside and wider on the outside here. So all you want to do, we got an extra note here we don't need. We'll delete that. Okay. So. This cap thing, as I said in my other video, it's a kind of a hit or miss thing. I've done these caps like this; they don't fail me. But if make them, some people just make them flat like this. Some people come over here and they'll do an extra little cap on the side. It just do whatever works. There's no real rules here, right? So now there's your start and your finish. Now what we want to know is what's next in line, which is excuse me, we need to push this up. So we go all the way to the top here. He goes first. All right, let's push T. See, so he's underneath there. Let's turn him black. Right now, we know this one. Where does it start and end? He starts over here. So we want to put the start over here. And then the end will end right here because we know that's what's coming up next. Let's press T. here so we will start that here because we know that's where we put the end there H we put the start right there so now we're balling all right now we're pretty much almost done here now remember what we want to do is let's go back to metric select and we want to select all of these because remember what we're doing here is we are doing 3d puff so you want to change your density to a let's go 16 on this one right so your density is now set at 16 what's really cool is these densities really don't matter but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just set you to like 23 right uh, there's no really rhythm to that part right it's kind of like sometimes you do something
sometimes you don't, right? So the last cap we're going to do is we know we're ending up here, okay? So let's look at H. So this is, we're ending right here, right? And so that means that you want to, you kind of might, you might need to have like a little run stitch here. So let's go a travel stitch and go here, H. And then we will move this up. Since we know this one is ending there, H, that ends there. It will connect here and start there and go all the way to the end here. And now we're going to do a very small cap. So digitize the closed shape. Come over here. Left click, right click, left click, done. Enter. H. We will straighten this up. And now you know your start is, I usually have the start on the right and the red on the left. It's just how I do. Now we know we had this little thing here coming up here that ended. So we know we're going to drag this over to the right. And now we're going to bring this between here and here. We're going to stick this up boom, like that. And those will connect. And now what we'll do is this will start next. H and then where did this start at? Right over here. Boom. That'll connect. And then also we need to change that color to black. Okay. And that's a done deal. That didn't take anything at all, right? That's a done deal. Let's uh let's change the color here so you can get a good look. Now I'm gonna give you a little trick of the trade as well. So now that we have this all done, if you were worried about trims, because all this is all stuck together, but let's look if I have any trims. I do not. One trim. But sometimes, I've even done this other times, right? I had trims. So what I want to show you is branching. And branching kind of changes the game so you don't have to worry about as much, right? So let's take this. The shortcut for branching is I. Let me see if I can find this for you. This should be under Edit Objects. And there it is right there. The shortcut for branching is I. So once you hit I, it's going to ask you where you want to start. We'll start here. And where you want to end, we'll end here. And I want you to look at all of these over here, those objects over there once I do this. Boom. It just turned it into one object again. And that's a wrap, right? So if you did have a few trims, press that. I are branching here and that will just make this one object and you're ready to go now if you wanted to know how I did the cap let's go over to the cap and here is the cap and you want to know how I did that let me hide this and this right here was not super uh, difficult to do so all I did well hold on, let me go to this one first again excuse me kind of radical here okay so all I did here was I duplicated, okay, I changed the color, and then I just kind of dragged it up here to give it a shadow, all right, then I duplicated it again, and then I changed the color, and then I dragged it up again, and then you can see that I have three copies here, so then what I did is I just kind of left those copies there, actually I hid Let's say I hid the blue one down here. You know what? Let's hide the black one because this one doesn't have any color. So let's hide the black one. So now what I did was I just went here and I kind of let's see. Let's drag this up. I didn't have any extra there, and I wanted this like little shadow looking thing here, right? So now I just went in and I digitized. I just went in here and digitized these little edges. You know, that's all I did. I just came in here. These are all right clicks. And I just followed along and I use this as my template. Okay. And so once I was done, press enter there. We'll go to a satin stitch. And these are going to be flat stitches, right? And then I turn this black or whatever color I needed it to be. And there you go. And so I just kind of went around the whole thing. Now I want to go back over here to show you because you don't need to watch me click for everything, right? So here's what I did. And then in order to cut my trims down, I did travel runs between everything here, right? To make sure. So I did the 
same thing I did before. I sequenced it from bottom to top and I started here and went all the way around. Now, a lot of people ask, what's the difference between apply closest join and branching? Branching is when all of your letters, like we had over here, are touching together, right? So all this is already touching, so you would do branching. When you do apply closest join, these aren't touching each other, and so you just want the, the software to know, I want you to apply everything that you can, I want you to connect to everything the closest that it can get, right? And so when you come over here, the shortcut for that is J, okay? So we'll look at edit, edit objects here, and it should be down here, apply closest join. So you just would hit J, and it would apply those joins all together. Now here I have three colors, okay? And you should have three trims, and you do, okay? And that's pretty much a done deal. That's how I did that, so let's hide this again. Uh, I just went around, and then I just duplicated it. Once I, I, once I, I, I traced one of them, and I attached everything, then I duplicated it. And then what I had to do was, uh, let me unhide select it, because I had a couple of uh, stray threads here, I just had to kind of reroute, like if you see here, I had to reroute this thread so it wouldn't be overlapping the black there. And that was it. Just make sure you hide all of your threads and then you, you bring your trims all the way down to nothing. I'm gonna let you see the stitch out here, but if you wanna see kind of the full way I hooped the hat and everything that I did, then go look at the video where I actually stitched this out. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, shoot them down below. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.